Vidura. Dhridrashtra, Pandu and Vidura were sons of King Vichitravirya, stepbrother of Bhishma. The first two were born of Ambika and Ambalika and the last of a servant woman. Dhridrashtra was born blind and so was disqualified to ascend the throne, though he was the eldest. Pandu, as his name indicates, was all white in color and he ascended the throne. He had two wives, Kunti and Madri, and five sons, Yudhishthira, Bhima and Arjuna by Kunti, and Nakula and Sahadeva by Madri. Pandu died in the prime of life, and his wife Madri ended her life along with him. Kunti was left alone to protect the five Pandavas. Yudhishthira was very young and so Dhridrashtra took charge of the kingdom and ruled as an agent with the help of Bhishma. He had 100 sons who were known as the Kauravas. The Pandavas and the Kauravas were together educated and brought up with equal attention. But the Pandavas outshone the others. Yudhishthira in righteousness, Bhima in physical strength. Arjuna in archery, Nakula and Sahadeva in astrology and material sciences. Duryodhana and other became envious of them and began to give them all sorts of troubles. They set fire to the dwelling wherein they were sleeping, threw them into the Ganges, poisoned their food and succeeded in driving them out of the kingdom. In all these acts, they had the consent of their father, but Vidura secretly knew all their plans one by one and saved the Pandavas out of all these calamities. Vidura was righteousness personified. He was a great devotee of Sri Krishna. He was very polite in his manners and was always inclined to help others. Before the war commenced, a lot of peace parleys were undertaken on both sides, but they brought forth no results. Lastly, Sri Krishna himself went over to the court of Dhridrashtra and advised him to agree for peace by giving five villages for the Pandavas to live in. But Duryodhana, the Shilok, refused uh, to yield a pin's head of space for them. Then Sri Krishna warned him of the consequences. Duryodhana, in his haughtiness, ordered his servants to bind the cowherd boy. But before the servants could do anything, Duryodhana saw Sri Krishna in every face standing before him and was confounded. He was ashamed, but there was no repentance. Duryodhana requested Sri Krishna to stay on for dinner. Sri Krishna replied, The food you can offer is short-lived, dies out in a few hours. But the hospitality that a spoken word could give is ever permanent and cannot be destroyed or withdrawn. That cordiality is absent in you. I decline your offer and I am content to be the guest of Vidura. I will partake with pleasure the gruel that he can offer me. So he camped at Vidura's home where there was lots of satsang. Vidura was by the side of Sri Krishna and offered him fruits. He was so much immersed in the imminent presence of the Lord and his satsang that he forgot what he was placing in the hands of the Lord, whether it was fruit pulp or peel. All the pulp was on the ground and all the peel had gone into the stomach of the Lord, who never examined what his devotee gave but simply swallowed it as a great offering. When Sri Krishna was gone, Vidura advised Dhridrashtra to follow the path of righteousness and condemn the acts of Duryodhana. So Duryodhana insulted Vidura in many ways. Vidura left the palace immediately and went on a pilgrimage and did not return for a long time even after the war ended. When he actually came, Yudhishthira was the king. Yudhishthira received him with great reverence and inquired about his pilgrimage and the sacred places he had visited. While Vidura was narrating the same, Yudhishthira asked him about the welfare of Sri Krishna and others at Dwaraka. Vidura, though he knew of their end, pleaded ignorance. 
people will like happy news when conveyed but not unhappy tidings and his experience of duryodhana was fresh in his mind further if he mentioned of the end of sri krishna yudhishthira may also die of a broken heart so he avoided a reply one day at night vidura approached dhridrashtra in private and began to discuss with him time is merciless the same time factor which helped one in amassing wealth progeny property kingdom fame and sovereignty again takes vengeance on him and compels him to leave all these and march forward to that end from which nobody can escape to take stock of that time factor and march forward is wisdom dhridrashtra you are old no more can you hope for pleasures in this world all your kith and kin are gone old age is dragging on you no more can you have any children or grandchildren you are eaten the food served with contempt by your erstwhile enemies no more can you think of giving any charity to brahmins this body is perishable leave off your ignorance and attachments think of the way for liberation next morning when yudhishthira went to salute dhridrashtra the room was empty there was no trace of the old man his wife or vidura they had all left for the forest meanwhile narada came there and revealed the intentions of the blind king and consoled him soon arjuna returned from dwaraka with a sad tale to tell he was summoned there to take cha- charge of the ladies all the yadavas having perished in mutual strife out of drunkenness shri krishna had also left his mortal coil while arjuna was returning with the ladies he was attacked by a band of dacoits and looted arjuna's strength failed his gandiva would not bend his archery vanished his knowledge gave way because the, his main support for all his fame Shri Krishna was not there to help him. He stood before his brother crying like a lady. Yudhish, Yudhishthira mourned for the Yadavas and for the loss of Shri Krishna. He found that times had changed. No more could he remain on the throne. He handed over the kingdom to his grandson Parikshit and started for the last journey. His brothers and Draupadi followed him. on the way his brothers fell one by one and lastly draupadi yudhishthira went on alone a celestial car came there to take him to paradise but he would not enter it without the dog that followed him faithfully that dog turned out to be lord death who had followed yudhishthira from birth like a shadow and made him tread the path of righteousness dhridrashtra having reached the forest became a pure ascetic he bathed in the sacred ganges offered worship to god drank some water left off all further actions left off all food and became peaceful he renounced his attachment to his sons kingdom and wife seated himself in a convenient place and controlled his prana physical activity he withdrew the five senses from their objects the mind from the senses and concentrated on the lord he was rid of the three impurities called sattva rajas and tamas he eliminated all disturbances caused by objects became free from the influence of maya and controlling the body senses mind and intellect he remained in a state of samadhi in 7 days time a forest fire enveloped the place and burnt his physical body vidura after reaching the forest left off the company of others went further northwards to perform tapas and never more returned yama lord of death is said to have been born to a sudra lady as vidura due to the curse of sage mandavya